Salas. I play for DC Nasty and National Class X-Ball team. Oh wait, my here we are at our beautiful practice field. There's like no one here today. So um, a little bit about paintball. It's a it's a growing sport. Started out in the 80s. Uh, started out as sort of a military simulation game. But uh, it's it's gone way past that right now. It's a national level, uh, world level actually, uh, extreme sport that's played all over the world. Like, um, for instance, like I traveled the country playing paintball, uh, playing X ball, and uh, I am going to travel to France next year to play uh, the Millennium Series. All right, tell us about the equipment needed to play paintball. Okay. Big thanks to the Smart Parts and Traxxas for my setup Chris right here. The, uh... This is a Smart Parts Nasty NXT Shocker. It's made for our team and is uh, available to the public. Uh, this gun runs on a compressed air, basically mini scuba tank. It holds uh, 4,500 uh, 4, uh, PSI of compressed air. goes through the regulator into the gun, and it's an electro-pneumatic system. It uses a solenoid to actuate a bolt and shoot the air which shoots the paintball out of the barrel. The paintballs are fed in the gun by an electric, electronic hopper, which is force-fed. It uses a drive cone to uh, feed the paint in the barrel. And I have a little custom upgrade on this thing called a uh, speed feed, which is a trap door, which lets you pour paint in without opening a lid. It saves time during a game. And uh, very worth the like $2 it is to local players. Play, uh, many people start out playing in the woods. Um, woods ball, you dress up in camo, go out, have a good time, no real pressure about it. It's, it's great for recreational play. Uh, you move up a step, you have speed ball, which is uh, played on green fields with inflatable bunkers, and it's, it has a set rule, uh, rules, it has gear for it and, and such. Then you move up to actual formats. There's two main formats in use uh, nowadays. Um, seven man, which has seven people, seven minute games, um, and it, it, it's prevalent. It's it's dominant over on the West Coast at, at the moment. Or the format that I play, which is X ball. X ball is uh, played a lot like hockey. You have two 20 minute halves, you know, with each point being a flag hang, um, with penalties for for uh, playing on. Uh, playing on is playing on with a hit and uh, cheating and such, but uh, those are few and far between. Um, also, you have uh, like at the other end of the spectrum, you have scenario play, which is like they have reenact. It's more towards the reenactment side. Like you, uh, a local field just did a battle of the bulge reenactment. I, I personally don't prefer this type of paintball, but it's great. It's great for the business, and it's it's a good time if you're into that. Our experiment will test how reality matches up with theoretical calculations. The question we want to answer is, a paintball is shot at 280 miles per an hour from a flat fire at the height of 1 meter. How far does it travel before hitting the ground? First, we convert miles per an hour to feet per second. Then, we convert feet per second to meters per second. Second, we find how long the paintball is in the air, which depends on the vertical velocity, which starts at zero and increases at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. We shot the paintball still at 280 miles per an hour, but from a 45 degree angle. How would that change how it travels before hitting the ground? All right, so this is us uh, uh, measuring. So that way we can find the distance of. Okay. Uh, that looks like 189 one. Okay. That's for shot number one. Yep, 85.52 feet in calculated measurement compares to a tape measurement of 189 feet. We shot the paintball still at 280 miles per an hour, but from a 45 degree angle. How would that change how it travels before hitting the ground?
calculations for the horizontal component of initial velocity does not change. We then calculate the time of flight up and down and multiply it by the constant horizontal velocity. Final distance is calculated by taking the initial distance measurement, adding it to the average velocity and the average acceleration change. Wait, one second. Let me get a. That's for shot number one. Yep. You're gonna see this one. Two thirteen, three. Okay. The calculated measurement compares to an observed measurement of two hundred eleven feet. The range increases in both the 45 degree elevation and the flat launch in both theoretical and walk measurements. Measurements use an ideal paintball shot on an airless earth versus a direct launch into the actual world. The calculations do not account for air pressure and temperature which affect air density and therefore drag and lift of the paintball or for differences in human accuracy in their shape and composition. The shape is often not a perfect sphere and can vary depending on how they are stored. It means that the ball stays at higher the mass of the ball, a the heavier the rate ball will not slow down as fast as a lighter ball. means that the ball stays at higher speeds longer.